religion. But the Muslim birth rate is significantly higher than for the native French. Some Muslim men practice polygamy, with each extra wife having extra children and collecting an extra welfare check. Because, you know, in Islam, we owe, infidels owe them this money. They don't feel bad about this at all. They think that it's their job because we owe them this money. The problem of Islam is more than a problem of numbers. An Islamic expert who debates Muslim leaders on French TV says the problem is one of principles. It's an open question. It's Islam an ideology or a creed. It doesn't matter how many there are. The problem is people who follow Islam. They're somehow in a political party, which has a political agenda, which means basically implementing Sharia and building an Islamic state. This is the caliphate. From the 1980s until recently, criticizing or opposing Islam was considered a social taboo. So the government and the media effectively helped Islam spread throughout France. They said, we're expecting Islam to adapt to France. And it's France adapting to Islam. Well, okay, what about the Burqa controversy? One French Muslim man told a reporter that Europeans should respect Muslim dress. A Persian woman wearing a headscarf said, the veil is in the Quran, and we only submit to God and no one else. The laws of someone else's land do not apply. They are above those laws. They go by Islamic law and Sharia law only. No other laws matter. But even if the government elites are in France are in denial over Islam, the people in the streets increasingly are not. Some have become fed up with what they see as this Islamization of France. They started staging <laughs> they started staging pork and wine uh, parties and cocktail parties in the street. <laughs> they say they're patriotic demonstrations meant to strike back against Islam. <laughs> Another national demonstration is planned for uh, um, in a, on. Uh, the fourth of next month, <laughs> have pork and wine <laughs> parties. <laughs> well, the French, par <laughs> sorry, the French Parliament debated the Burqa law this year. The president of the Union for a Popular Movement political party has a warning for the West and for America: we cannot accept the development of such a practice because it's not compatible with the life in a modern society. You see, he said, and this question is not only for French people who have to face this challenge, but people around the world. You know, we've talked about nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. You know, when the government and the people have different ideas, the government says it's not politically correct to say anything bad about Islam. The people say, we are not only going to say something bad about it, we're going to have us a pork and wine party in the street. Invite your Muslim friends. Come on over and have some pork. Come on over and have some bacon, some pork chops. Come on over. Invite them over. <laughs> I, I think that's kind of funny myself. Well, what about what's going on in the U.K.? You know, th this is what, what's really um, kind of disturbing. And, you know, uh, after we go through this a little bit, he, uh, in the second half of the program, I want to compare what the Bible says about the Antichrist and what Islam says about their Mahdi. Uh, I've done this before, but I, I think this deserves some revisiting because the comparison is stark. And I know there's a lot of people all over the place who say, there is no threat, there is no comparison, blah, blah, blah. Well, these are the politically correct people who just will not see the truth. They are going to be the very first victims, the very first ones to fall. They will be the ones getting the lashes or getting their hand cut off after being accused of theft. Wait till they crucify you or hang you. 
Wait till they bury you in the ground up to your neck and then stone you to death because somebody said you did something. Don't need any proof. My goodness. So let's see what's going on in Europe. What is going on in Europe? It's been almost two years since the Arab Spring. Since then, we've seen hardline Islamists come into power, increase movement toward this fundamentalist government of pan-Arab riots in response to a YouTube video or so they say. Is there any truth in that? Well, given this trend and the the anti-Western viral spewed daily by Muslim clerics all over the world, it's hard to believe how many European countries continue to live in a state of denial when it comes to the Islamic population around that's growing into countries. It's no secret there's a population shift taking place. And yes, most people are aware that there's unrest among immigrant populations and a pronounced desire to change their their host environment to suit their sensibilities, their cultural sensibilities. But the notion of a fascist, fascist Islamic force taken over Europe has been dismissed. They say it's it's fanatical and extreme that it couldn't happen. Well, it's this very denial that's allowing it to happen. Riots and violence like the French Muslim Youth Riot in 2005 and 2010. It seemed contained to neighborhoods and suburbs. And it had very little influence on the the central powers where this happened. It was just, you know, just like any other protest. But the case of murder or mayhem in response to an art exhibit or cartoon seems unlimited and uncontainable. And and this has become the case. That you just can't contain these things anymore. I think Benghazi was a good example of that. You know, and, and the the political correctness that, that comes with that. You know, I'm you're going to be surprised when, when I start telling you who Obama's putting in office, besides John Brennan, head of the CIA, being converted to Islam in Saudi Arabia while he was in an uh, official capacity in Saudi Arabia. They say it wasn't the government. But I'm telling you, Saudi Arabia is an Islamic government, and he was converted to Islam while he, John Brennan, while he was in Saudi Arabia. I mean, this is clearly. This is clearly something that that should have raised the ire of our government, but instead Obama not only raised his ire, he embraced it and him in charge of the DIA. Oh, we get to that. Well, today the threat of Islamist violence is felt in the houses of parliament and government. Europe has changed. And in as little as five years it could look very different. Most Europeans seem unable to recognize the severity of this phenomenon, or at least objectively. You know, there's two types of conquest that can destroy sovereign states. The first is a military conquest. It's conspired of of an armed conflict from beyond a state's borders. That's the traditional form of war. The second is an internal conquest. It's conspired of a certain segment of society taking over that society, drastically altering its lifestyle and worldview. Today, Europe is under threat of both types of this conquest from Islam. Islamists are attempting to conquer non-Muslim countries through war, and it's complemented by, by immigrant populations some of who are fourth and fifth generation immigrants who advance an ideology of intolerance of the society that they're moving into. And the demonstrations in the streets and the prayers in the streets blocking off the streets, telling people they can't come out of their houses during the during this prayer in a public street. Let a Christian try that. They would move the military in on you and take you right off to a FEMA camp. They would bust that up with riot gear like that. 
these Islamists are attempting to conquer all of these non-Muslim countries through war and through immigration and through government. You know, Islamic immigration to Europe was previously considered innocuous. Small-scale process wouldn't affect the general uh, demography of, of European states. But today, a very different picture has come about. According to the German Central Institute of Islamic Archives, the total number of Muslims in Europe, including Russia, was about 53 million. The numbers have grown. Uh, the census was taken about four years ago. The number of Muslims in large European city, cities present even more dramatic picture. You know, in Stockholm, for example, 20% of the population is Muslim. In Amsterdam, 24%. Brussels, 25%. Marcel is 25%. What will these statistics look like in over 10 years, 15 years? The Times of London claimed that Muslim population in Great Britain is growing at a rate 10% higher than any other minority. Any other minority. They are taking you over. From 2004 to 2008, the number of Muslims in Great Britain grew from 500,000 to 2.4 million. Million! Britain's Christian population is aging. Its Muslim population is young. And I guarantee they're going to have an, an impact that's going to be even more dramatic in the next decade. The concept of a parallel conquest from within or from without appears to be the strategy, strategy of Islam uh, all through the, uh, Europe, not just the UK, all through Europe. But you, you folks in the UK, you're, you're really getting a, a pretty good dose of this. I'm curious as to why, why you're allowing it. You know, I know your government is, is capitulating. They're politically correct. They're saying, well, people have to be able to practice their religion the way that they want, but they don't let Christians. They don't let Christians do the same thing. Only the Muslims. There's something wrong with that picture. You know, the introduction of Islamic law in Great Britain is already being felt. Posters having been hung in areas warning people against entering Islamic neighborhoods wearing modest clothing. Why are you allowing that? Islamic uh, religious leaders preaching the public to convert to Islam. Some have even pronounced the UK ought to adopt Islam as its official religion. Sound crazy? <laughs> well, you know, there's a lot of groups that are attempt attempting to advance this very goal by increasing their influence in Parliament, by exploiting the very tools of democracy that they're trying to abolish. They're using our own laws, policies, procedures against us. And these changes are occurring quickly. Most of the time, this leaves policymakers unable to strategize in an effective manner. You know, you folks in Europe, you're you're approaching an iceberg. There's a need to change course. And before it commits, you need to do this before you commit ideological suicide. Nothing less than a public outcry is going to provide the city makers with the support necessary to put an end to the explosion of the of this takeover. You're being taken over. You know, this religion of peace doesn't allow you to leave. doesn't allow you to leave the religion. Once you become a Muslim, you're a Muslim for life. And if you try to leave Islam, here's what happens to you. 
Turning now to Somalia, where four more Christians have been executed by radical Islamists in that East African nation. International Christian Concern, a human rights agency, reports members of the Al-Shabaab extremist group kidnapped and beheaded the believers late last month. The four worked for an organization helping orphans in southern Somalia. A spokesman for Al-Shabaab said the workers were guilty of abandoning.